Hey everyone, we're making Cute Link from Link's Awakening. Some time has passed since I made this model, so the blender in the video is an older version. As we go, I'll try to point out any changes or anything I'd do differently now. Or like, maybe remake some of him. Definitely redoing his head, I can do that much better now. Okay. A good place to start is setting up our reference. Add in a few collections. In front ortho view, add the front reference. In top ortho view, add the bottom image. Add the side reference in left ortho view. Select the bottom image and spin it 180 on the Z axis. Line up the bottom and side reference, I use the back point of the hat to help, and then drag them all out of the way. Name your references so that they're easier to keep track of. I put my bottom, front, and right reference in the first collection, and then I'll use the second collection for the back and top. Add the other references and try to line them up. It can be helpful to toggle their visibility off and on while positioning them. Usually you don't need both sides reference, but for this model his hair is asymmetrical, so I rendered out both sides. Lining up reference carefully can help avoid confusion later. Alright, it's time to get modeling. Let's make a new collection, name it Link. Drag the default cube into it so it may live out its life as Link's body. This little eye toggles visibility if you didn't know that already. Select the cube, tab into edit mode. Scale it down until it's approximately tunic sized. In face select, select and delete the bottom face. Scale on the Y axis, ideally in edit mode. Time for a subdivision modifier. This is what modifiers used to look like in Blender 2.82. They look different now. Select the top face and pull it up. Control R to add an edge loop about armpit height. Scale it on the X axis. Move the top face back down. Pull it back a teensy bit. Apply this subdivision modifier and add another. Delete this side and add a mirror modifier. Move the mirror modifier above the subdivision. Enable clipping. Now move stuff around in front ortho view to get it to match the reference. Go into right ortho view and get it to match the reference as well. Just a whole lot of circle selecting and moving. I want this vertex to be roughly at the midpoint of his arm, so slide stuff around. Apply your modifiers from top to bottom. Delete this vertex and this side in one fell swoop. Add a mirror modifier. Edge slide this vertex down and move the top one up. Edge slide these two vertices as well, making the opening basically into a circle. In front view, flatten out this opening a bit. Then get sidetracked giving the bottom of his tunic some shape. Do some more fine tuning. And alt select this opening loop, shift S to move cursor to selected. Shift A to add an 8 vertex circle, rotate and scale. Disable proportional editing if it gets in the way, or just turn on connected only. When the arm circle is in place, shape it a little, and then connect it to the body with faces. Edge slide to smooth out our edge loops. Alt select this loop, extrude, and with proportional off, scale by zero. Select all and hit M to merge by distance, or Alt M if you're using this old Blender version. Add another subdivision modifier. Methinks my vertices are not clipping, so enable clipping in the mirror modifier and select any troublemakers. Drag them toward the center line. Now add our subdivision modifier. And now we've made Link the most perfect tunic ever. Mifa would be proud. I'm gonna line up these edges with where the belt is. Now continue shaping things until you're happy with them. Do yourself a favor, click this drop down menu, enable some more restriction toggles, and turn off the selectability of your reference. On the top, move this vertex forward and this one back. Delete this vertex and give Link a neck. Alt select this edge loop and extrude it up. Scale it down and reshape it to be circular. Add an edge loop near the bottom to sharpen the crease. Name this object something like chest. Add an edge loop near the bottom and select the bottom edge. Scale this bottom one in and pull the other one down. Select the bottom loop, extrude and scale by zero. Pull everything to the middle and up, add another edge loop down here. Select all and merge by distance with M. Select the belt edge loop, duplicate with shift D, separate with P, name this new object belt. In object mode, select the belt object, apply the modifiers, add a solidify modifier, change the thickness until it's close to the reference. Apply the solidify modifier. Alt select the top loop, Pull it down and maybe rotate it slightly. Position and scale the bottom loop as well. When they're roughly in the position you want them, select both loops and bevel with Ctrl B. Scale this middle loop down to flatten it out a bit. Turn on proportional, select this side and match it to the reference. 
Delete this side, add a mirror modifier, add a cube to become the belt buckle. Scale it down, perfect. Just kidding, let's scale it more. And when it's about the right size, add three edge loops with Control R. Select the middle loop, pull it forward with proportional on, select all these edges and bevel them. I missed this one somehow, so don't miss it. Move the back forward, position and rotate it. Select the front four faces and scale down with proportional editing on. Connect these vertices with J to remove the end gons. Select these front four faces, inset with I and scale. Extrude and pull back, scale slightly. Select these edges and with Ctrl E, choose edge split. I don't think that exists anymore, at least not in this menu. But you can mark these edges as sharp, add an edge split modifier, and then disable edge angle on the modifier. I'm going to delete half the belt and mirror it. Looks good. Let's make an arm. Add a cube, scale and position it. Select this face and delete it. Add a subdivision modifier. Grab this end face and pull it out to where his arm ends. Hit X and delete this face. Add an edge loop with Control R. Position and scale. It's going to take a few edge loops to replicate his little arm. Just add edge loops and move stuff around as needed. Try to match the top and front reference. In object mode, select the body object, tab into edit mode, pull this mid vertex on the arm opening in. Go back to the arm object and shade smooth. Select this outer edge loop, extrude and scale. Extrude again and scale by zero. Pull these overlapping vertices into his sleeve. Add a mirror modifier, and looks like my reference is off on one side. But it's cool, with mirror, anything is possible. Name objects and organize them frequently. Let's make his legs next. Add a cube, position and scale as we do. Add our favorite subdivision modifier. Delete the top and bottom face. Keep scaling and positioning. Turn up the viewport display of the subdivision modifier to two and then apply it. Slide these edge loops closer together. I merged the vertices on the back side of his leg at center. Shift this back part down a little bit and pull his knee forward. Take a look at how it looks with the subdivision modifier and get it to match the reference. I did some scaling with proportional editing. That looks all right. Let's name it and move on to the boot. Select this bottom edge loop, duplicate it with Shift D, position and scale it to become the top of the boot. Rotate and extrude down. Extrude again and rotate. Rotate and position these loops to better match the front reference. Select this bottom edge loop and extrude it halfway down the foot. Extrude again, this time to the bottom of the foot. Disable the visibility of all the other objects and select these faces. Extrude them forward. Grab these two edges and pull them over. And then move stuff around to match the shoe shape in the reference. Create a big old face down here and then divide it by selecting these two vertices and hitting J. And then divide in pairs of two. Delete these four vertices. Add a couple edge loops here. I'll select this loop and make a face. Delete this old vertex. Join here with J and connect all the way up. Delete this edge. Select these front faces, extrude and scale, merge at center with M. Position it near the middle. Fill in these faces. Select all and merge by distance. Now match the shape to the reference. You might find proportional editing useful. It doesn't have to be exact, just try to get it shoe shaped. I added an edge loop here to give me some more geometry to work with. Add an edge loop and drag it down to sharpen the bottom of the shoe. Select everything on the bottom and scale by zero on the Z axis to flatten it out. Select this top edge loop, extrude and scale by zero. Add another edge loop to sharpen this edge. And one here. Circle select this group of vertices in the center and pull them down. I accidentally had this one selected, don't do that. Look at your foot shading and do any last minute changes you want. And when it's done, mirror it. Enable the visibility of the rest of your model, and he's definitely taking shape. Let's make some hands. Add a cube, scale it down. I made it on this side since my reference is slightly uneven, but feel free to use either side. I'm gonna update the reference available for download so you don't have to worry about it. His four fingers are connected, so pull this face out to the tip of the hand. Add an edge loop and our favorite subdivision modifier. Scale this loop on the Y axis. Scale the front face on the Y axis as well. Select the face closest to his arm and delete it. Add an edge loop and drag it towards his arm. Shape things a bit. 
You can see in the reference his hand is a little thicker in some parts. Pull this vertex down, and we need some more geometry to get it to match the reference. So, apply the subdivision modifier. Select the faces where his thumb comes out of his hand and extrude them. Position and scale. Try to round this shape a bit. When it looks good, extrude the front faces out. Match them to the reference. Add edge loops as needed. Add another subdivision modifier and shift stuff around to make up for the lost volume. Proportional may help. We have the top side and front references, which will help us get pretty close. Sometimes it's hard to tell exactly how something should be shaped, just try to get it looking decent. When you're happy with it, add a mirror modifier and choose the body as the mirror object. Thanks for watching! I hope you liked the video. If you enjoyed, leave us a like or a comment. If you'd like to help us grow, share our video. Next time we'll make his head, and hair, and stuff and things like hats, and more hair. Stay safe, I love you all, goodbye!